Hey there, Episcopal Church. Welcome back. This is episode two. We're going to be talking about fractals. Fractals are the concept that the same pattern exists at every scale in reality. So, for example, if you are looking at fractals, you're noticing things like the way in which a shell spirals out is actually similar to the way a galaxy looks, the way it spirals out. If you take the example of this fern over here, you can see that a fern, each leaf has a certain shape and pattern. Each stem with all of its leaves has a certain shape and pattern. And then the whole plant also has the same shape and pattern. That shape and pattern exists and is replicated at different scales from the super small to the super big. And when we're talking about fractals in terms of organizational theory, in terms of what it means to be church, what we mean is that there are patterns that replicate themselves at every scale of church. And I'm going to try to be modifying my language here. Instead of talking about church in levels, congregation, diocese, wider church, as if that's a hierarchy, Instead, I'm going to be talking about those different scales, church at the local level, church at the deanery level, church at the diocesan level, church at the provincial level, church at the wider level. There are fractals, patterns of behavior, patterns of belief and commitment that exist at every one of those levels. And if we're going to change the culture of what it means to be Episcopalians, if our culture is going to shift, our attitudes and behavior needs to shift at every one of those levels. We need to have new patterns that will come into being and be shown at every level. What's an example of what I'm talking about? I want to take one that's a little bit, um, maybe a little touchy, maybe a little controversial, but I think it'll help you see clearly what I'm talking about. At every level in the Episcopal Church, individualism is a pattern of behavior and belief and commitment that we can see at every scale within the Episcopal Church. So, for example, if I'm thinking of myself as an individual, the reality is that I have my stuff and you have your stuff. And we might invite each other over to dinner and thereby share some of my stuff. I'm going to share some food with you. I might bring something to your house if you're going to share some food with me. But the reality is your stuff is your stuff. My stuff is my stuff. And when I, when I look at my phone, my phone tells me that this is what individualism means. This is the pattern that I'm talking about. My phone defines individualism in this way. Individualism is a habit or principle of being independent and self-reliant. An example of that would be the sentence, a culture that celebrates individualism and wealth. Individualism is about, I have mine, you have yours. The second definition coming from my phone is that individualism is a social theory favoring freedom of action for individuals over collective or state control. When I'm talking about the pattern of individualism, I'm talking about what's mine is mine, what's yours is yours. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, one of the things that we value in that dynamic is freedom. I can do what I want with my stuff. You can do what you want with your stuff, right? So that, that freedom is a value that we have, and it is reflected at the individual level. I'm talking about two individual parishioners in a parish. You have your stuff. I have my stuff. We come to church together, right? We share to help make the church go by tithing or by pledging or by giving on a regular basis to the church. You give some of your stuff to the church because you believe in it. I give some of my stuff to the church because I believe in it. And hopefully there's enough stuff that we're all giving that the church keeps going, right? But the principle of individualism is still very much there. I decide how much I give. You decide how much you give. And in a lot of congregations, even your priest doesn't know what you're giving. So that sense of valuing individualism takes place at the local level and at the congregational level. 
The congregations similarly. My congregation has its stuff. Your congregation has its stuff. And we agree through diocesan convention that we will each contribute a fair share to the diocesan ministry, right? And we agree and vote on what the percentage of that share should be. And then you give your percentage and I give my percentage. Your congregation gives your percentage. My congregation gives my percentage. And hopefully there's enough that we gather to meet the needs of the diocese. But the bottom line remains an individualist pattern that reflects what happens at that individual level. Each congregation has a vote to decide how much they give in terms of convention, right? Then we move up to the diocesan scale and we see that pattern again. My diocese has its stuff, your diocese has its stuff. And we agree that we are going to, through general convention, each contribute an assessment to the needs of the wider church. But you see how at every level, from wider church to diocese to congregation to individual parishioner, that same individualist value set is still there. I got mine, you got yours, and we'll collaborate based on our willingness to collaborate in order to share some of what we have in order to do work together. But at every level, you can see it's a fractal that value of individualism happens between people in the parish, between the parishes to make a diocese, between the diocese to make up the wider Episcopal Church. If we were going to change that idea, we would want to be working at all of those levels to reimagine what our values might be if we want to have different qualities of relationship. In the next video, we're going to talk about one possible example from the natural world which might help us relate to one another differently and shift our culture a little bit away from this individualist idea. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we're going to change the whole world and I'm not a communist. Stop it in the comments about that. What I am saying is that there are advantages and disadvantages to this individualist thing. And in my opinion, as we face the uncertain economic future, we are stronger together than we are apart. One of the advantages of individualism is that it allows for individual freedom. One of the disadvantages is that it leads to isolation, particularly in times of stress. In the next video, we're going to take an example from the natural world, highlighted by Adrian Marie Brown. We're going to take that example and we're going to apply it to every scale of church in order to see how the church might look at each of those scales. Look forward to seeing you next time.